Hey folks, we're going to do a couple James Brown songs today. We're going to start out with one called Soul Power. So Soul Power goes like this. Okay, so that's basically soul power. Let's check it out. So we got a D raise nine. Now this chord was added to the live show. So it, um, I think in the studio recording, it kind of waits on that downbeat and comes in with this other part. But we're going to play that in there. You can you could take it out or leave it in, whichever you like. So this is a D raise nine. It's going to be five, four, five, and six. So we hit that on the downbeat, and then we're going to have this chord. This is part of a D minor top. So that's seven, six, and five. What we're going to do is we're going to go... So we will have an upbeat on that second chord. That second chord puts that pinky in there on the seventh fret. So it's, then we go to the eight. So we're going seven, six, five to seven, six, seven to seven, six, eight. So we got. So that one went from like the eight twice to the seven to the five back to the seven. So. So if you notice, and this goes back to that whole like 16th notes thing where you're basically, you always have that kind of down and up stroke going. It's just which ones are muted, which ones are you really sounding out. And so if you notice the second chord here, the one that has the seven, that's going to be an up stroke actually. And then most of them are downs, but there's going to be a couple ups in there. So... So that, that one with the five down there was up also. Up. And if you wanted to play without that chord, it'd just be two, three, four, one. One. Okay, and so these chords, this is a D minor, like I said. This is a D minor 6. This is a D minor 7. Okay, so that's our first part. Let's try to play that together. I'll count you in. Kind of slow tempo. 2, 3, 4. Okay, so that happens a lot of times, and then we're going to go up here to this G7-9 chord. This is going to be 10, 9, and then you get that ring finger, getting those 10s. So that was a big part of the James Brown sound. These two chords, especially this D raise 9, but even more so this 7-9 chord. So here we're going to have... So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's going to be 10th fret of the G string. Then we're going to the D string. 12, 10, 12. So three times of that, then the fourth time is going to end a little different. So that was... Bump. Then we're going to bend this 12. Now we 
got this new thing. We're going to do a C7 here. This is the eighth fret. 8, 10, 8, 9, 8, 8, C7. We're going to go one. And so we don't hit on the one. We kind of hit a chick there on the one we hit after that. So it's like we got a little run. So that was 10 on the A string. And then 8, 10, 10 here. And then back to this 10. This time we go up to that 12, so that ends up being 10, 8, 10, 12. And then the end of it is, so that's 10 on the A, to 10 on the E, 8 on the A, back to this D note here on the 10th fret of the E string. So. Now instead of hitting that last D, what I would do is I'd go back and hit that D raise 9 chord. So there's a lot of muting going on. There's um, my palm is muting the big strings, and I'm stro I'm stroking. I'm trying to hit with the pick down here on these lower strings all the time too. And also this uh, finger here is muting that D string so that you're able to do all this chanking away and not hit any unwanted open strings, you know, so pay attention to the muting for sure. I'll go to G. Now at the end of the song we're going to have this little tag at the end. So a lot of at the end of a lot of his songs we would do a lot of this uh Sometimes we get real quiet with it, sometimes we get louder with it. But it was always to like stretch out that space while he was entertaining the audience trying to figure out where he wanted to go next or leading up to like to hit some final beat or something depending on the song. So let's look at that last C7 going out again. So that's your D7-9 with that ring finger doing those fives on the bottom. And then end on a D raise nine. Which raise nine also means uh, dominant seven sharp nine. So that has more of a, I call it like a, um, Kind of like a Jimi Hendrix Purple Haze kind of a chord. More than like a I feel good. This one's kind of happier. This one kind of has more of an edge, darker edge to it. Okay, so anyway, uh, Soul Power by James Brown. We're going to move on now to Doing It to Death. Now Doing It to Death has a little riff that starts out. That begins the main rhythm. So let's look at that opening riff again. So we got five, seven on the D string, down to seven on the G, and then we're gonna go. So that last part was seven to five on the G, seven on the D, back to the five on the G, and then five, three on the D. So, so we put them together and we got. And then we're gonna do a C9 to a D9 twice. Okay, so once again we got. And then we're gonna have a walk up chromatic from the three. And when I say three, I mean the bass note. That's the C bass note. So we do have a two here, but I'm really calling it a three because that's where we're kinda we're kinda leading with that bass note. So three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that's where we begin this new riff. So let's go through that all one more time. Okay, now this is going to begin our new thing off this F9. So that was just the same chord up one, 
and then we come back and let me do the raise nine here so <laughs> That's your verse. Gonna have a funky good time. So it does that a whole bunch of times. Then in the live show, as it developed over the years, I guess he had added in these chords because we always did these whenever I was in the band. We would come up to the G9 here, and this part is not on the original record. So we have the G9 to a C13. And a C13 is kind of like a C7. But it, instead of having these two notes and that 8th fret 2nd string, you have a 10th fret 2nd string. And that's the 13th note of the scale. That's why it's called that. So it's really like a C7 with a 13 added to it. So we got the G9, which is a G7 9. C13. It's just kind of um, inferred. It's kind of just known that these things are basically 7s and 7-9s seven sometimes. But what you'll do to be able to communicate it quicker to people is just give that number. And they kind of know if you're doing a funk song, they know it's not a major, you know, seven or nine or 13. They know what you're talking about. They know it's like this already dominant seven type chord with a certain number added to it, you know. So one more time from the F. Now I'll do the G to C. Then after you do that for a while, you do a couple verses of that, then he would start talking about going to D. Dog D, down D, funky D. And that's we just we're gonna transfer the key, switch keys there, and just come down to this fifth fret D one. So that's how that one goes. A lot of times I would get a solo in the show. If I didn't mention in this video, I played with James Brown for eight years. So this was one of my, these are two of my favorite songs that we got to play in the show. And uh, a lot of times when we went to the key of D, that's when I would get a solo and he would say, uh, you know, Damon, funky D, get down, whatever. And um, so what I would use is I would use the D Dorian mode. So if you want to look up here, the D minor pentatonic is a good place to start for it. That's your basic blues scale. And you could add your flat fifth in there by going. And of course, it's good to know the positions all up and down the neck for that so that you could move up and down at will and kind of go with where your in, uh, improvisational instincts are taking you. Um, but if we look at this Dorian mode, you got 10, 12, 13, 10, 12, 9, 10, 12, twice, 10, 12, 13, twice. That was the scale that I would use a lot to try to get kind of jazzy and kind of try to take that sort of one chord thing and make make it interesting by playing off different. So this would be like that other position. So if you got. This note was part of the flat fifth in that position, so. So stuff like that is what I would do for my solo. But anyway, we're gonna get back into, um, we got the D thing. Now at some point there, there, he would call for some hits, and it would be um, this riff here. This is going to be like the 8, 9 to 10. Then we go down to the 1. When you do the 1, you got to have an open string in there, so you just kind of pull this finger out of the way. And then you can put it back in. So that was 1, 2, 3, B flat, B, and C9. So we got F, F sharp, G. And you can call this like a B flat, B, C. And then we're going to go E flat. E and F. So all together B.
So then at the end of that, you can hit that F9 and try to really hold the, that ring finger down so you can really hear all those different frets kind of going out of there. The little ending was something like kind of a six, seven, eight, few times. Can't remember if it was two or three times. On now this chord here is another way of doing the C9. This is an interesting one. My buddy Keith in the band, he taught me this one for the first time. This is a different way of doing that nine. It, as if your bass note was on the big string, then you end up with a eight muted A string and then eight, seven, eight. So the middle of it there looks like it's like kind of like looks like that eight seven eight, but it's got it's a tricky one to get all those fingers in there. But this would be like a F to that C, and then there'd be a little riff that he would play at the end, and that's just eight to ten on the G string. So it's, and then we'd all hit together, and that would be the end of the song. Okay, so hope you enjoyed that. That was uh, Soul Power and Doing It to Death by James Brown. Please like and subscribe, and we shall see you soon. Thanks a lot.